Right, so for this next chapter, uh, we're kind of combining together chapters 20 and 21 into one kind of big cohesive unit because it's all kind of similar. So There's going to be a big focus on carboxylic acids and some substitution reactions dealing with them. And so the first thing we're going to do here is start off with, as usual, naming, but this is actually going to be the last naming video we do. Um, and I'm going to kind of draw like a hard line between the things you need to know and what you don't need to know. Um, and I'll explain what I mean when we go through it. But to start off, like, let's learn about how to name carboxylic acids. So um, kind of follow suit with what we've learned from aldehydes already, right, in that carboxylic acids, right, they're typically, right, um, if you have a carboxylic acid, they're at the end of a chain, right? There's nowhere else you can really place a carboxylic acid. Um, so because of that, right, we're starting the naming, the numbering chain uh, with carbon 1, right, being carboxylic acid. So this would be carbon number 1 here. Um, and we add the suffix oic acid to them at the end. So if we had a, sorry, um, so we replace the end with oic acid, right? So for this molecule up above, right, that's carbon-1 again. So the name for that molecule that I've drawn up there would be just um, propane oic acid, right? Because we have those one, two, three carbons there, um, and then that's it, right? Propane oic acid, again, so replacing that last bit with oic acid. Um, and if it's in a ring, just like with a, a aldehyde, uh, we would add carboxylic acid to the end of the, of the molecule. So we'll take a look at what that means in a second here. So a couple examples here that we'll kind of go through pretty quickly. Um, and thing to note here, right, carboxylic acid does take priority over everything else. So that will be, again, kind of putting it uh, first, right? So with the molecule seen here, uh, this first one here, we got one, two, three, four, five, six. The name for this would be, right, 5-phenyl. And then we have, right, six carbons in a row, so it would be hexanoic acid. The next one here, uh, right, the CO2H, right, don't forget. This is sort of the abbreviation of carboxylic acid, right, that CO2H bit here. So here we have, right, carbon one, two, three, four. So a total of four carbons. String it all together. Uh, we would do it like this, where we have at the three position is the alkyne. So we would say um, but three ein oic acid like that. And for the last one here, we have the carboxylic acid coming off of a ring. So in this case, that would be position one at the start of that ring here. Putting all together, we would have 2-chloro-cyclopentane carboxylic acid. Again, because of carboxylic acid, that group is coming off of a ring, we have to kind of keep it like that, right? We can't say cyclopentanoic acid. We have to actually uh, call it carboxylic acid because it's coming off of the ring. Some other general names for acids here are these. Right, notice um, formic acid we could call methanoic acid. Acetic acid we could call ethanoic acid, and then we have benzoic acid at the end there, um, which is that, right, that phenyl group, again, being benzene, just coming off of that uh, carboxylic acid group there. Um, so actually the name for this would be benzene carboxylic acid, but these are kind of the, the non-IUPAC names that people often call them. So acetic acid, uh, formic acid and benzoic acid are the common names for the things I've listed underneath. And this is sort of the end of what I would want for us to know, um, but I am going to continue on here a little bit here, and I'll explain in a second what I'm doing. 
Um, but we've been learning, right, we kind of know how to name, right, ketones, aldehydes, right, and then uh, now carboxylic acids. There's a lot of other different types of carbonyls, right? We have acyl chlorides, amides, esters, um, something called an anhydride, which is this group here. Um, and we've learned how to name carboxylic acids. Uh, we have nitriles, we have salts, right? Deprotonated carboxylic acids, which you see a lot in like biochemistry and those sort of situations. Um, we're not gonna learn how to name all of these. We could, but that would take, right, a, a while. That would take a week. So I'm kind of giving you this information up front. And again, you know, this is, this is the hard line, right? Don't need to know this, at least for this class. Uh, but I'm just gonna quickly go over it, right? Um, so what I've done is I've, incl I've included a list of, of these different functional groups from the book here. Um, and given the name, right, acid chloride, acid anhydride, ester, amide, nitrile, carboxylic salt, and these are essentially what you add to them, right, to, to name them, right? Il chloride, ic anhydride, instead of saying ester, you would say eight. Amide is what you include for amides. Nitrile is what you put at the end of that carbon triple bonded to nitrogen. And then you would also put eight for these carboxylic uh, acid conjugate bases. Um, I just want to give you this information, right? I might refer to things in this way, but it won't be something that would need to be tested on, okay? Just as an FYI. Uh, we can also do the same thing. Again, you don't need to know these, but this is sort of the situation. We can also name sulfurs and phosphoruses, right? Um, where sulfurs, right, there's a lot of different ways we can name sulfurs, mostly because they can have more than eight electrons in their valence orbitals, right? Because they are... Um, in that third row, so they can expand their octet. And so the simple name for, an, for a sulfur, kind of like with alcohol, is a thiol. With carbons attached to them, like an ether, we call them a sulfide. And the list kind of goes on here in a way that I think is kind of self-explanatory. So for example, if we had a compound, uh, like this first example here, we would call this um, one, two, three, four. We would call this three methyl butane thiol. We call this this example here next to it. Um, this would just be dimethyl sulfide. This might be familiar to you, right? This is DMSO, right? Dimethyl sulfoxide. This is these SN2 reactions. And then um, this would be uh, para-toluene sulfonic acid. That's that uh, TSOH we talked about in the last video for chapter 18. And the phosphines, right, kind of following a similar trend in ways we've kind of covered a little bit with triphenylphosphine. Uh, they follow a similar pattern to the sulfurs here. Again, we, you know, I'm not expecting you to know or remember this information. I'm just kind of giving you this, right? So I might, so I might in class refer to things as thiols or sulfides, um, but you, you, you do not need to know or memorize this in any way, okay? Um, and the last bit of naming here that I want to go over is this priority list. I know a lot of you have been wondering about the true priority of these uh, functional groups. Um, which is something I'm not super concerned about, right? I've, we've gone over them a little bit in terms of like, you know, uh, alkenes being more important than alkanes, but this is the full list here. It's something that, this is in the book, but what the book doesn't say that I will include on my own here is in between, right? So this goes in lists of, of low priority to high priority, right? So carboxylic acids take place over everything else we've ever learned, okay? And way down at the bottom here is this group here, NO2, the nitro groups. Uh, but in between alcohol and amine, this is the other part of the list. We have alkenes, alkynes, and alkanes. So amines are less important than alkanes, and alcohols are more important than alkenes. Okay. So this is this full 
functional group naming list. Um, this is important. I think this is a more important bit than other things we've covered. Um, but again, it's sort of the supplementary information that I don't expect you to memorize. And again, rather than spending a week or more right, looking at all these names, because this is a lot, right? Uh, I kind of want to just give you this list. Um, and what I will also say is notice we have function groups on the left, but we have these group prefixes in the middle here. This is when they are in a branch. When in a branch. Uh, for example, uh, if we had this molecule here, again, I'm just kind of doing this as a supplementary thing, so don't worry too much about this. But we have this molecule, right, where we have a ketone and an ester. You see that? But the ester, right, is higher in priority than the ketone. So in this case, this molecule here, the, the ketone is a branch. Meaning, we wouldn't use that own prefix, we'd be looking at the ester prefix, which I covered in, in the last uh, slide there. So the name for this would be as follows, where the ester is priority, so we say, would say one, two, three, four, the ester, right, this bit here, is just part of the branch. So don't worry too much about that. And so what we would call this in full, to give it the full ester name, is ethyl for the ester branch, 3-oxo for the ketone branch, and then butane O8. With the O there, just sort of complementary the, the uh, 8 part. So you wouldn't say butane 8, you would say butane O8, which again is just a naming thing. But this is how you would name that, right? This is how you would go about naming these different um, branches versus uh, roots. And for a similar example, just to make it uh, hopefully more abundantly clear what I mean here. If we made that an aldehyde instead, right, notice aldehyde is again in higher priority than the ketone. So we'd start by naming that the aldehyde. And so the name for this would be 3 oxo butanal. With the al being, right, the, the root and the ketone being the prefix, right, being that branch. Again, I'm not going to quiz you on this or test you on this, but this is just the situation, right? In case you have to go into organic chemistry further and need to know some of these things. But for the most part, right, IUPAC naming is kind of this long, sort of drawn out thing sometimes. And I'm trying to keep to the to the simpler things, right? So carboxylic acids, aldehydes, and ketones, I'll expect you to be able to name, but these sort of combinations and all these different groups and functional groups, don't worry about it, but this is sort of the situation. This is what you would do if you had to name them, okay? So hopefully that's clear. Um, again, that hard line, just to really re reiterate here, the hard line is here and lower, right? All of this other stuff is just supplementary information. But hopefully it's useful in some way, right? 